Hey, so uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to detect the tuning of an RFID antenna using a device like this ve Vector Network Analyzer. Uh, so a Vector Network Analyzer is a tool that RF engineers use and uh, you could kind of think of it as like a more advanced version of an oscilloscope but it doesn't have all the functionalities of oscilloscope, it does some other things that an oscilloscope normally wouldn't be able to do. So in this case we're going to use it for measuring the properties of antennas and in this example we're going to use um, an NFC tag and uh, I'll show you on some of my implants as well what the tuning looks like and you can use this uh, to detect what the best positioning is on an implant to couple with a specific coil shape or if you wanted to check to see if an RFID implant was still alive uh, you will get some response on a ve vector network analyzer even if it's not getting enough power to make a full read so uh, let's check out this actual unit I have right here so this is called a nano VNA it's a small device you can probably get it for like 60 bucks on eBay um, and the technology has really advanced to a point where these are affordable now. Uh, so this one actually has an internal battery and is charged by USB-C, so it's a pretty nice option. Now when I first turn on the device, you can see there's a lot going on on the screen. It is overwhelming. Um, there's like four different display traces on here showing different types of information. But uh, for this test, we're really only interested in one type of information and that's going to be uh, the trace number one so that's going to be yellow so the controls for this device are kind of weird it uses this like uni button up here so it has the ability to pan right and left and then there's a select option and then a lot of the time um, the extra option, like say a right click, would be if you held down the button for two or three seconds. Uh, so for this, I'm going to show you how to navigate through the menus. It's kind of obtuse, so I'll, I'll take it slow, uh, but if you miss something, you can always go back and replay that portion of the video. So to start out, I'm going to want to disable all the extra colored traces other than the yellow one that we're interested in. So to do that, I'm going to press the button once to open up the menu and then I'm going to scroll to the top of the first menu and it says display so I press the button once I scroll it up until I found an option called display I'll hit that and then uh, I'll go to in the sub menu I'll go to trace so you can see that there's four traces here all listed with different colors so we're only interested in the yellow one, so we're going to select that. Then we're going to go to single. And if you select single, you'll see that it removes all the other colored traces. So we only see the one that we're interested in. So now, um, this is really great, but the effective range of this vector network analyzer goes from 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz and if you're familiar with NFC technology we are only interested in uh, signals right around the 13.56 megahertz range so we're kinda gonna need to scale it in so we only see an area around that point so usually I set it to 13 megahertz to 15 megahertz so we can catch both sides of the target so to begin you go back into the menu you're gonna be still at the trace or the the yeah the trace option so we're gonna scroll down until we get to back and we're gonna hit once and then we're gonna hit it again to go back to the home menu uh, and to change the scaling of this display we're gonna have to go to uh, stimulus so scroll up until you get to stimulus hit that 
and then uh, we're going to want to change the start point and the stop point. So we'll scroll up until we get to start, hit that. Now navigating this uh, value enter screen is a little confusing. So if I, from this point, when the zero is red, I can move to the right and left and add and subtract values from that particular uh, like decimal place. And you'll see that it says 50 thousandths or 50 kilohertz, uh, but we want to make it 13 megahertz. So to change to a different decimal place, you have to hold down for three seconds and let go, and you'll highlight the decimal place. Then we're going to move over to the value that exists currently, 50,000. I'm going to hold down for three more seconds so that I can now edit this value. And I'm actually going to edit it down to zero because we don't care about anything in the kilohertz range. Then I'm going to hold down again for three seconds and move up to the appropriate range. So right here, this would be the tens of megahertz. So because I want 13, I'm going to hold down for another 3 seconds. And then I'm going to switch this to a value of 1. And then I'm going to hold down for another 3 seconds and move back over to the individual megahertz range. Hold down for 3 seconds and modify the value up to 13 million, which is 13 megahertz. At this point, I can just hit the middle button and it'll accept that value. And you can see in the bottom left there, it says 13 megahertz. So now the uh, right side is 900 megahertz. It's a bit high. So we're going to have to do the same process again. And you can see in this example, I'm hitting it and nothing's happening. So these buttons are kind of finicky. So uh, I will scroll down to the stop value. Same process. And I'll make this one 15. And then I'll just hit one click and we'll get our value. So now you can see in the bottom right it says 15 megahertz left it says 13 megahertz. So now um, the uh, Y scale is too great. We won't be able to see any differences. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of zoom it in on the line. So we'll enter the menu again. And we're going to want to go back to the home menu. and uh, or the sub menu and then we'll go up to the top where it says display and this is back where we originally modified trace we're going to modify scale so I'll hit scale and then I will go to the value scale per division so right now it's at um, 10,000 values per division in the y-axis. So I've had the best results at around 50, not 10,000. Uh, you can tweak it to get better scaling if you want. All right, so now we've got a better value. You can see there's a lot more noise on the line because we've zoomed in so much. So now it's time for me to hook up an antenna to the vector network analyzer and try and couple that antenna with an RFID device, like an implant. So we can see that okay. Uh, so as far as leads go, you can see that there's the SMA connectors up here. Uh, I actually purchased this wire when I bought the ve vector network analyzer. It goes from an SMA connector to some coax and then the coax is broken out to two alligator clips. Obviously that's not ideal for RF performance, but it makes it so much easier for this testing and uh, we're not dealing with like really fine tuning, so it should be fine. 
Uh, and you can see right here, I have two different antenna layouts that I created. I literally just took some, in this case, magnet wire, which is covered in enamel, so it can be really thin, but still insulated. I took some magnet wire for that one, made a randomly sized loop. It really doesn't matter because we're not trying to couple it with a capacitor to make a resonant circuit. We're just trying to make an inductor. Uh, so I made an arbitrary loop here. This one, I didn't even use magnet wire. I just used a um, some solid core uh, insulated wire. So uh, to begin, I'm going to hook up the leads to this existing coil that I have. It doesn't matter which way you hook them up for this uh, use case. So I've hooked up my coil and uh, we should be able to see results change as I introduce things to the field on this yellow line. So uh, this is a MyFair um, RFID tag just as an example. So you can see right here as I get very close to the antenna you see a pretty significant droop and uh, the position in the x-axis of that droop is the resonant frequency of the tag. And that's because the most energy being output by the vector, net, net, vector network analyzer, the most energy is being lost at that frequency. So it's being attenuated into this device. So if I do that, we can actually um, scroll over. Uh, you can eyeball it, but I just go to the right and this little yellow arrow starts moving. And I'll move the arrow to where about I perceive the middle point of the droop to be. Uh, and that is going to be, you can see it listed in the top right here. It says that the resonant frequency of this tag is 14.52 megahertz. So that's pretty high, um, but the um, depth of the draw is very large. So if I move to 13.56, you can see that a much smaller percentage of the um, available power is being taken at that frequency. So that's all the power that's being delivered to the tag. But the tag doesn't need that much, so it's fine. I'm not sure why this tag is tuned so poorly. There might be good reason for it, but it's probably just shoddy. So uh, that's an example of an ideal tag. Uh, so let me try an, an uh, next series implant. So I'm gonna have difficulty getting this framed. So you can see where the resonant peak is of the next implant. It's pretty high, actually. It's like 14.1, I think, um, because that arrow indicates 13.56. But you can pretty clearly see that this device was coupled. I'm not getting a read with the vector network analyzer. I'm just losing power to the implant. So. You can see that behavior. So if you get a vector network analyzer and you set it up in this way, um, you can detect dead implants. You can detect the quality of the tuning of your circuits, like your LC tank circuits. Um, and there's a lot of other useful utilities for this. So, good luck.